What's up everybody and today I wanted to do a brief little discussion talking about reaction times, draw stroke times and why we stress training and how important training can be to making sure you go home to your family. my party we're just getting started a life is a dream or a nightmare starring hand me a drink cause i think i'm going all in get me a shrink who can catch me when i'm falling cover up my scars flip the handlebars crashing in my car welcome back everybody and again today we're talking about reaction times uh kind of draw stroke times and again why we all as instructors stress the importance of training and not just instructors anyone in the shooting industry is going to stress how important training is so just to kind of read over some notes and kind of give you an idea that i've got or ideas on what's going on and why we stress this is so on the tooler drill i'm sure some of y'all are familiar with the tooler drill what they showed in that tooler drill is your average person can close in on you within a second and a half. That's within 21 feet. Within 21 feet. So we're talking about seven yards. All right. Most studies have shown your average violent encounter happens between three to seven yards. Okay. We're talking nine to 21 feet. So within 21 feet, the longest distance in that average distance, seven yards, a second and a half for someone to close in on you. Now, does anybody know what the average draw stroke is from concealment? A second and a half. That's why we stress the importance of training and practice and why dry fire practice is so important because it will help speed up that draw stroke. So the amount of time it takes you to draw your gun out, if you're that, and that's if you're 21, 21 feet away from somebody. All right, that changes as that distance shortens. But within 21 feet, the average person can get to you in the same amount of time it's going to take you to draw and get your gun out. Now, with the Range Master study, what they found is that the majority of your defensive shootings happen within a range of 9 to 15 feet. So now we're talking 3 to 5 yards. So what they're talking about is 82.6% of defensive shootings happen between 3 and 5 yards. So what do you think the time frame from somebody, the average person, will get to you within 15 feet? 1.07 seconds. 1.07 seconds most average draw stroke is a second and a half this is why we stress the importance of practice and training now we get down to nine feet nine feet we're talking about 0.65 seconds for the average person to get to you there are very, very, very few competition shooters that have a draw stroke that quick. Very few. Very, very few. This is why training and practice is important. Now, let's talk about up close personal attacks. You know, we're talking punches, kicks, grabs, anything like that. All right, those normally occur within three to five feet. So we're talking about three feet, 0.21 seconds, five feet, 0.37 seconds. So this is where a lot of instructors, especially that are teaching a defensive mindset or real world scenarios, is going to start also teaching retention shooting and how that works. All right, I'm just kind of wanting to talk about it. I'm not going to demo what retention shooting is. We'll do that in some later videos or go out to YouTube and search retention shooting. And you'll find people that are showing you how to do that. 
right? But that's where in those close distances we're going to start teaching retention shooting, how that works, and how you can use it to your advantage. Now, yes, that's going to help speed up your draw stroke, but again, you still got to make sure you practice that because if you don't practice it, it's not going to be where you want it to be. You might end up missing the bad guy and end up hitting a good guy. But I wanted to discuss reaction times and why training and practice is so important because this is something that not a lot of people discuss or even talk about, you know, when they start talking about, you know, defensive shooting or you start seeing them talk about, you know, videos of where people are involved in some defensive shooting situations. But again, within 21 feet, seven yards is a second and a half. Average draw stroke is a second and a half. Dry fire practice will help speed that up. If you don't know what I mean by dry fire practice, what we're talking about is you're just doing everything without the gun being loaded or without you being on the range. I can stand here in my garage, I can stand in my house, or wherever I want to, put my stuff on, put my holster on, make sure the gun's unloaded and clear, I can sit there and work my draw stroke without even having to fire any live ammunition. Now, don't just limit yourself to that. Reinforce that with live fire. All right, don't just limit yourself to dry fire practice. Reinforce that with live fire. All right, but that's how you can help increase your reaction times when something bad happens is with training and practice. I just gave you all the statistics. If you don't believe me, you can go and look this stuff up just like what I did. Or I would like to thank Ryan and Amber with Fit to Fight to help provide me with some of this information. All right? They're located in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and they have affiliates all throughout the United States if you would like to learn from them. Um, another thing with the reaction times when we're talking about stuff up close and personal I always recommend having a backup to your gun. What I mean by a backup is I would highly recommend some type of self-defense hand-to-hand training. Me personally, I take Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I think it's more uh, applicable to the real world than what some of the others are. Now, many people will argue with me about that, but that's just me personally. Uh, BJJ, uh, Judo is also very good as well too. Wrestling wasn't, wouldn't hurt. It just depends on what you can find in your area. I found a great place here in Greenville at Boss Grappling, so that's who I've been going to and who I've been learning from, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. I've not only lost weight, I've learned some really great skills. But now don't go in there, especially with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and thinking, all right, in two months, I'm going to pick this stuff up and know what I'm doing. It's not the case. You do have to learn and you do have to practice and you do have to train, but you need to have a backup to your firearm because one, you might not be able to get to your firearm quick enough. Two, you might not be somewhere where you can even take a firearm. So you need to have a backup to your gun, all right? Because again, three feet was, what did I say, 0 0.27, 0 0.37? I got to look back at my notes. I'm sorry. Sorry, 0 0.21 and three feet, 0 0.37 and five feet. Yes, you might be able to get a retention shot, but they could also get close enough to get past your gun, grab your gun. Now it's a fight for your gun. So please have a backup to your gun. I hope this has helped y'all understand reaction times and why we stress training and practice. And always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range. Take the six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I'm